Hey everybody, Jay here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over winter chainsaw tips. Uh, please pay attention to the video. Try not to skip through. I don't want you guys to miss anything. We'll try to keep it short and sweet. So yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, first of all, as a disclaimer, your owner's manual. I know all of us um, men here, we don't really read owner's manuals, I'll admit it. But anyways, in your owner's manual, there's probably a section that talks about winter chainsaw tips, but I'm going to go over pretty much all of them. There's not that many of them. So yeah, let's go ahead and get right to it. All right, everybody. First thing we're going to go over is um, chain tension. Now you got to pay attention to this because when you're outside in the wintertime cutting firewood, obviously your bar and chain is moving. It's going to warm up. You're going to set the tension. But the problem is when things cool, that's when things shrink and contract. So when you're done cutting in the wintertime, I'm talking probably under 32 degrees, under freezing temperatures. When you're done cutting, it's important to let some slack out of your chain. Tip number two, if you have a bar that has a grease hole here, first of all, hopefully you knew there was a grease hole here, but anyways, you're supposed to take grease. I use a syringe. Here's a, I made a video on this just alone. Maybe I'll attach a link if I remember, but basically I always keep the um, bar nose sprocket greased. I try to pump it up maybe uh, every tank or so. I top it off just to keep this bearing in here uh, nice and lubricated. And, uh, but anyways, my point is, is that wintertime, use a thinner grease for winter time. Uh, obviously grease gets thick, just like anything, just like oil, grease gets super, super thick uh, come winter time. So make sure you use a lighter, thinner grease, <coughs> excuse me, probably like a um, like an assembly grease, something that's thinner that you can pump into the sprocket nose that'll still give lubrication, but um, you don't wanna be pumping super, super thick stuff in there. Uh, a, it's hard to pump and B, um, you don't wanna have a lot of, uh, I guess, stress on this nose bearing here. So yeah, that's tip number two. Tip number three, um, especially, I mean, this is important all the time, but especially in the winter time, um, keep your bar and chain out of the snow. Um, it just, you don't wanna add that added moisture uh, in the bar, just keep the tip out of the snow. Sometimes snow can actually pack in back here and you don't wanna obstruct anything. Uh, you wanna keep this clean. So try to keep, just like the summertime, you try to keep your bar and chain out of the dirt. You want to keep your bar and chain out of the snow as well because uh, you don't want to pack snow in any of these bearings here uh the sprocket nose or you don't want to build up snow in the under the sprocket cover so i guess that's tip number three uh we'll jump right into it tip number four keep your chain sharp sharpen it more often in the winter time the trees are the wood is harder the moisture in the logs everything's frozen uh, and if you have a sharp chain should be a question no matter what, but pay attention, especially in the winter time where the trees are more dense. I noticed uh, sharpening is more important come winter time felling than summertime felling. Obviously I keep a sharp chain no matter what, but you realize more of a difference in the winter time with a dull chain trying to cut a super cold, uh, pretty much frozen tree. So that's tip number three and four. So let's move on to the power unit of the saw. All right, uh, tip number five is under your intakes, and I got both my, this is my Echo CS 590 Timberwolf, and this is my CS 490. Um, I'm doing maintenance on these, so that's why I figured I would do this video, but let me show you something that um, you need to pay attention to come winter time. So let me pop you off the tripod real quick. This is probably the most important tip out of this whole video, so I hope you're paying attention. Uh, and I hope these tips and tricks are helping you so far. But anyways, most new saws, they have what's called, I hope you can see that, a summertime mode and a wintertime mode. Here you have a sun, and over here you have a snowflake. So on my CS590 here, if you look, each saw is different. You can obviously check your uh, check your owner's manual, but it's tough to do with one hand. But we have a little black piece here that, let me see if I can do this with, uh, see if I can push it back in. Um, can't really do it there we go so there's this little black piece in there that you push in for summertime mode and then come winter time you you pull it out so what you can do is uh, obviously you can use your scrunch let me grab my scrunch okay so it's in summertime mode now so come winter time we slide out this black piece here uh, hopefully you could see that here but um, this is snowflake Summertime, so we just move this to winter mode on the 490 here um, Here's also a trick anytime you're working here open your choke It's gonna close that valve there. So nothing nothing gets in your chainsaw But as you can see here, there's this little flap Let me pull this out for you turn you guys into the Sun or into the light see how there's this uh, Sun for summer if I flip this around 
there's a snowman for winter. So obviously it's winter time now, December. We're gonna slide this back in here. Uh, so as you can see, this is on winter mode and this is on winter mode as well. Now the reason why this is so important, winter and summertime mode, like I showed you here, the fins of your engine are right here. Um, so what that's gonna do is flipping this around, having this open, uh, come winter time when it's cold out, this saw is gonna suck in air uh, obviously every saw needs air to run. Um, it's going to suck in the warm air from the cylinder head uh, versus trying to suck in the ambient, let's say you're cutting in five degree heat. So when this saw is running, it's going to pull in quote unquote pre-warmed air uh, for it to burn in the engine. So that's why you want to make sure that your saw is on the appropriate mode. Uh, you got to be careful though, remember to set it back because Come summertime mode, this cylinder's hot, you don't want to be sucking in even hotter air outside because you could overheat your saw. So pay close attention, that's why I hope nobody skips through this video. That wintertime mode, I generally, if it's under freezing, I leave them in wintertime mode. If it's above freezing, they run fine uh, regularly. So just make sure you pay attention and do not forget to switch it back because your saw will run even warmer come summertime if you don't flip it back. So hopefully that makes sense. Wintertime, you're sucking in warm air off the cylinder head. Summertime, you're keeping that warm air, that cylinder out, and hopefully you're sucking in ambient, cooler air. So that's tip number, I think we're on six maybe. So yeah, that's that, let's move on. All right, next thing is bar oil. Um, you wanna read the back of your bar oil um, to make sure that it is compatible for wintertime use. Um, this Echo oil is considered um, all weather formula, but what I do is if you don't, if you have a regular straight weight summertime bar oil, you can thin it out with some transmission fluid. Um, now, as far as ratio, um, I've always done two parts or two thirds bar oil with a third transmission fluid because this will cut in, this will actually thin this up. This thins pretty good. I've done that with my uh, CS490 here on the workbench five years and we still have uh, our factory bar, so we haven't worn it out. So make sure that A, you either get winter bar oil, B, check to see if the oil you're using is winter compatible, or C, thin it out, find a ratio that works for you. Um, you want the oil to obviously get through uh, the oiler onto the bar and around the chain. So usually I do two parts bar oil, one part transmission fluid. That generally um, gives me a thin enough oil to pump through the pump and onto the bar and chain. So yes, that is our next tip. The next tip, and also a very important tip, this is just another bar we have off of, off of our saw. Make sure that your oiling hole, let me show you here, is clean and not obstructed. Because like, obviously the winter time, the oil is gonna be thicker. Hopefully you just listen to the last tip where you thin it out a little bit. But if this hole gets plugged up, basically what happens is, is uh, let me demonstrate. Under this cover here, your bar mounts up and then oil pumps out from your power head through this hole here, which obviously the chain will drag around and keep and keeps it lubricated. So make sure that you keep your oiler holes clean. You can use, um, you can keep a little like screw or nail on you. Hopefully you can see that. I obviously pulled some, some dirt out of there. You can keep a, uh, what also works good is a paper clip, uh, bread tie, anything, a thin piece of metal that you can get in there to make sure that bar stays clean, uh, that hole stays clean, because you don't want to be smoking your bar come winter time. All right, everybody, the next, um, the next tip I'm putting in here just for your safety, come winter time, wear your chainsaw chaps, please. Chainsaw is a deadly, deadly tool. Ask my wife, she works in the ICU. Uh, she saw a chainsaw injury last year and she came home white as a ghost. Um, so needless to say, make sure you wear your chainsaw chaps. These are actually my old ones. I got a new pair for Christmas because even if you, let me show you, here we have a Nick. I cut myself with my chainsaw chaps. I don't know when, it was a, you know, I cut a lot of firewood, but as soon as you cut your chainsaw chaps, they're no good because you disperse the fibers there and um, it weakens it. So these are no good. We're gonna scrap these, but that's my next tip. Come winter time, make sure you wear your chainsaw safety chaps. Also, also very, very important. Please, please, please. You'd watched this whole video so far, you paid attention to the saw, you need to make sure yourself, you keep yourself safe. Chainsaw chaps are warmer in the winter time. It'll keep you warm. I wear them all the time. Second thing is, on my father's belt, I keep a medical kit. Now this is, this isn't sponsored or anything, but this is the Skinny Medic Pocket Kit. I've had this for a while. It has a cat tourniquet, uh, four inch flat trauma dressing, compression gate, uh, gauze, 
nitro gloves, blah, 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 blah. Um, winter time, if you cut yourself in the winter time, you are going to bleed out faster in the summertime. Usually in the winter time, your blood's thinner, um, it's colder, your body reacts differently than come summertime. So please, please, please um, get yourself a medical kit, whatever works for you. I keep this on my belt, I keep this on my chaps uh, all the time just to stay safe out there. Come winter time, just gotta be careful. Uh, you're out there in the woods, in the snow. First responder is going to take longer to get to you. God forbid you ever have, ever have an issue, but carry one of these and keep a clean pair of chainsaw chaps, not a pair that's got a million cuts in it. Those aren't safe. So that is my last tip. Probably the most important tip is to wear your safety gear come winter time. But yes, let's recap real quick. Hopefully this video is not too long. Uh, first thing we talked about was bar tension. You want to pay attention to your uh, tension of your chain. Uh, winter time things are going to shrink. Tip number two, I, I might go out of order, but tip number two was your grease and your sprocket nose. Make sure you keep that, uh, use a thinner grease, keep it greased. Uh, third was obviously a sharp chain. Winter time is more hard on the saw if you ask me, so make sure you keep uh, a sharp chain. Uh, your fourth tip was the intake. Make sure you swap over to winter mode on your saw. Um, after that, what did we talk about? Um, ch -ch 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 try to think here. Oh, next tip was the bar oiling hole. Make sure that that's clear. There's no, you keep running your saw, things are thick in the winter time. Um, so you want to make sure it doesn't pack with snow. It get, doesn't want to get obstructed because you want to be able to oil your bar. Um, next thing we talked about the intake, the bar. Um, oh yeah, oil. Check your oil, read the back of your bar oil, see if it's winter rated. Um, and if it's not winter rated, you could thin it out with some transmission fluid. That's what I've done. It seems to work. Read your owner's manual. Read your owner's manual. Read your owner's manual. I don't want to be liable if you smoke your saw or smoke your pump. All saws are created, or all saws are different. Some manufacturers, you can't get away with it. Um, what else? Yes, I think that's pretty much it. And obviously, we just covered the safety aspect of it. So, yeah. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Winter time is my favorite time to cut firewood. Um, because you're not sweating, you're out, you know, it's quiet, you're out in the woods, it's great, ground's frozen, it's a perfect time for me. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this hopefully quick video, I know I've been already talking for four minutes, but hopefully these winter chainsaw tips will keep your saw in running order and keep you safe. Um, if I missed, if you think I missed anything, leave it in the comments below and I'll pin it if, uh, if it's definitely relevant, which I'm sure it is, because I have a lot of smart subscribers. So anyways, appreciate you guys watching, sorry to ramble, stay safe out there, and as I always say, we'll see you out in the woods.